Alright, it's recording. Alright, well we will start here in a second. Hey guys, what's up? It's Hokey. Um, today we are going to be flying with um, Jason G3131. Uh, he's a little bit more advanced on this than me. Uh, Jason, what are we going to be doing today exactly? I'm looking at a map and it's really confusing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today we're going to be flying uh, IFR from Madison, Wisconsin to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. showing you from, you know, simple I'm not a pilot, disclaimer, do not use this to fly a real plane. Um, but this yeah, is what I've learned. Be held liable for <laughs> yeah, any yeah I'm not. I'm not trying to get lost here. I just want to like help you fly some. What I it took a long, long time for me to figure out how to do this. So yeah. um, we will live by the live by the uh, motto: do your own research. All yeah. right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Moving on>. And <laughs> my hands are clean. You know, it's your life. I'm not making decisions for you. That's Definitely my, your life. That's... Definitely your life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we started off with right. KMSN. Yes. Um, how okay. do we even get to the IFR settings? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not even sure how to even get there. So. Okay, so we've got KMSN. You know, just search KMSN, KMKE. Um, that will default you to VFR direct GPS, which just takes you from that point directly to that point. Um, mm -hmm. Straightforward. Mm -hmm. So down here under IFR is the instrument flight rules. There are low altitude highways airways and high altitude airways um let's take the low altitude highway to the danger zone um there we go that's <laughs> what we're doing low altitude all the way baby now <laughs> so now it's saying we're we're departing direct and we're approaching automatic which is going to take us on the highway to the airport which means when we get to bay <laughs> Uh, not, hey your bay. Bay. not your bay, not your bay, ATC's bay, and that ATC's bay, by that time or somewhere around there, they're going to say, expect some runway, and then we have to go and program our computers. Well, that well, sounds dangerous. Yeah. For beginners, it's a lot to handle. Um, I'm, I'm a advanced beginner. Uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do is up here under Milwaukee for the approach, we're going to we're going to expect 19R. This does not mean that we are 100% going to land at 19R, which is south-ish facing, as what we figured out is with doing group, um, you know, Hokie and I are flying as a group, so he's going to be following along, trying to uh, learn this too. We can't set wind, <clears throat> uh, so we're just going to deal with it, and wind's going to be out of the west, <laughs> and we're going to be landing in mostly a crosswind, so... So what he's saying is Hokey or me might be breaking some uh, IFR rules once we get to the airport because I might not be quick enough to change my uh, GPS. Yeah, and we're gonna, <laughs> uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna freaking land and then uh, say I'm I'm sorry ATC. Uh, you know what they always yeah. say. You know it's it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Although I think yeah, I don't think they're anticipating like licensing, like your pilot license and everything. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> All right. So again, so Madison, Milwaukee, we're doing 19R ILS. Forget about all this other stuff for right now, um, as I'm still trying to learn all that stuff too. Uh, so basically, we're going to fly it to Bay, and then it's going to take us to um, a flight, an established <laughs> approach pattern. Now, yeah. very important here is to go to Navlog. And oh, yeah. here yeah. you right. get you get to tell ATC, you know, within <laughs> reason in your low altitude flight where you expect to cruise, and you can see, you know, you're taking off from Madison, we're gonna get to duties pretty quick, and then at bay we're gonna be at 6800, 6750. It says descent here. It's not really that important right now. It's whatever, but. This altitude here, 6800, is what we're going to need to remember of what we said when we logged this flight plan to ATC of what we're going to do when we're programming our aircraft once we hit fly and go into our airplane. So let's, for the sake of argument and an easily rememberable number, do 6900. And so uh, what, was our, uh, <laughs> what was our altitude? I thought it was pretty nice. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd enjoy this altitude. <laughs> <laughs> so now another thing with IFR is their 
there are free websites, and I'm using skyvector.com. Um, but uh, this there's a lot of not make a real uh, flight plan. Yeah, then yeah. that that's covered by this flight's disclaimer. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> once again, I have no blood on anyone. I'm not. I'm flying flight sim, and by no means do you take my advice. I literally, in the start of this video, drink some wine. So, um, you don't need to worry about the flight plan for now. But what you want to do is go skyvector.com, click flight plan. You can. Mm -hmm. It's easier this way. Type it in, and you can either from here get to the PDF that we're looking for, which I'll click on shortly, or you can get over to General Mitchell, KMKE. Click on this, and then hover over the General Mitchell part, and then get to 19R. So this 19R is the one we selected in our flight plan. In here, there's a lot of information. Uh, don't worry about it too much right now. What essentially it's saying is that we're gonna come into Adele, and we're gonna go, oh, OMG, to oh, Maj. I see Adele. <laughs> yep, and Basie. Hello, it's me. Okay, this, I this, <laughs> Basie. <laughs> so here you can see it's at 191, so the, we'll deal with that in a little bit, but we'll, we'll be coming into Adele at 2900, which ATC should be handling for us, and it is in our logged flight plan automatically because these flight plans feed from this information. This is actual pilot data in this sky vector you can actually see like restricted air zones of the president's there or you know it's <laughs> it's live so i don't think microsoft flight simulator is that live where we get no fly zones but um essentially what you need from here and we'll show you i'll show you that screen again but we're gonna before we take off we're gonna set our altitude we're gonna set our gps so set our altitude vertical speed we're gonna set our nav for our GPS to be able to find the localizer at Milwaukee. And we're gonna check our flight plan and make sure that we're seeing Adele for sure because that one, one important thing that I forgot to mention, Adele, you know, it shows up here, but more importantly, this little lightning bolt here yeah. means that at homage is actually where we're going to pick up the localizer and that mm. is going to tell the plane not only because up up here we'll be able to find we'll be able to find direction so we'll line up on the approach and we'll be in line with the runway but it doesn't know what to do vertically so we're still following atc uh. instruction here the plane will take over and it'll it can't this plane can't monitor speed um you're you're the your only control is in this approach is to control your throttle and to maintain the correct speed, which I'll ah, show you in a okay. bit too. But to know. other than that, we need to get to at 2800, which is, oh boy. Uh, I gotta do some math here quick. Oh, I guess I can just go up here. So homage, no, is that six? Yeah, so six, six nautical miles away from our landing is when we pick up on uh, homage. <laughs> I was just doing the math. I was like, I don't feel like doing mental math right now, even though that's, that's pretty good, easy. That's a good, uh, what is yeah. that, like a uh, square <laughs> triangle thing? And I was like, God, <laughs> it's 1030. I'm not doing that. Anyway, okay. <laughs> no, it's actually 338 Zulu. Just <laughs> point that out. But anyway. <laughs> so, set up the plan. Madison, Milwaukee, selected our ILS runway. We now have the flight plan, or the ILS. I forget what these things are actually called. The... Uh, something I, I my brain's I've been I just got off work for are you talking about the sky vector chart that thing? yeah the yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. the runway chart or the whatever yeah it's a yeah. ILS or LOC runway 19 R you can you can google a lot of wrong things about like runway ILS whatever and it'll come up and it'll tell you the right word that I'm I can't think of right now anyway um, That's okay. we're Ooh, gonna no. fly we're gonna hit fly we've done everything here yeah. that we need to, covered some prelims, and then I think... Tell me when you hit fly. I hit fly. Oh, I'll hit fly too then. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> Easiest, best step of the game to start getting on the runway. So yeah, so it basically sounds like we're just going to be making sure we get the right dis uh, height in the air, um, and then we start messing with autopilots and stuff to get us set up for the landing so it sounds like a lot of this run is actually just going to be setting up equipment mostly because it's such a short flight oh all 
if you're flying all IFR, it is mm-hmm. pretty much all just messing with equipment. Like okay. you're <laughs> you're responsible for takeoff and landing, um, and other than that, you are making sure that your computer has the information it needs to fly it for you. So, Wait, you're telling me I have to land the plane? You still gotta land it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's problematic. <laughs> but <laughs> it'll be it'll be set up for you on a silver platter. You're gonna okay. be like a hundred feet to well. 200 some feet off the ground switch off autopilot you'll be your trim's gonna be set you're gonna be on the right course on the right speed all, all, I, yeah. all i have to do is maybe turn down the speed really to land yes or, <laughs> yeah like, so i really can't mess it up is what you're saying you know what it almost it, it it um i know it's what pilots do but it, but it almost feels like a cheat. Are we using it does. cheat codes in this it anywhere? Feels, we, it, are, are last there... night when I was flying, it very much feels like a cheat. You're like, I feel like I should be doing something, but it's just <laughs> doing it for me. So I'm just over here admiring all the the amazing graphics that this game has to offer. Okay. But what you're saying is I don't have to hit B B A A A B B B B B B A to get into this uh, cheat mode. No, it's it's actually it's um. It's PlayStation based, so it was. Oh, trying to say, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you gotta give it a little font. All right. <laughs> so now I'm on the runway. Are you there? I am on the runway. Okay. So on a normal ILS flight that I've done so far, what I like to do is get everything set. And like this flight is gonna be short, but long enough to get every, all these things that I'll do set up in there but they're quick enough and I think it's easier and less stressful to figure it out on the ground especially as you get used to it Mm -hmm. so first thing I think is the most important um, breakthrough that I had because I was always like I knew I wanted to get to an altitude and and I knew I wanted to be on nav but like once you take off and like ahead of time I would set altitude select and whatever and then turn on it it would it would level off because it's gonna you're gonna set altitude hold mode on so what you have to do and this is a technicality that flight sim actually handles for you but ap trim needs to be set to on which it will be by default so don't mess with that that all the way up it's part of the uh startup procedures so it should be uh, already there now from here if you mm-hmm. remember, so looking at our bank here. That top, yeah, that top that panel, here, right? right here. The one above the big navigation. That's thing. right. Yep. So yeah, this yeah. is our autopilot controls. Um, yeah. Engage. No, do not. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> do not Hold on. Okay. I will not engage. I'll let you do the talking for Okay. <laughs> I tried that, and it works terribly, and I fought... The, I broke something in the game, and I don't know if I broke something in the autopilot itself that the game was just interpreting, <laughs> but I broke something where I was dealing with it yaw, all the way to the right. Constantly, so I was fighting, and I did, like, barrel roll after barrel roll. I somehow, I was flying with Austin. He was just on his way to Milwaukee. And I was like, yeah, I'm a little bit behind you right now because my plane can't stop going, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I figured out the, one, of the, one of the proudest moments of my life. I was like, I didn't crash. I didn't overstress. I remained calm. My pilots, my co pilot vomited, but uh, anyway. You're fine. You made so, it home. So, again, <laughs> digressing. So, autopilot controls. What, and you might yeah, have been yeah. some somewhat familiar with these, but we have, you know, most importantly here, we have altitude. So, here you're setting altitude, vertical speed is when you change altitude. So you can't just change altitude and then the plane does it. You change the altitude and then say, okay, now hit vertical speed and then control how fast up or down you're gonna go. Right. So first, and then I guess over here first is, uh, you know, nav mode. So that means that's gonna, that will follow the plan that we have in the GPS, which Mm. we'll get to in a little bit of seeing what that's doing because that can change mid flight. Um, and then heading, which we won't hopefully use in this flight, which will follow a select heading. And then approach mode will not be until we get lined up with the runway. So to start, uh, gotcha. hit flight director. Flight director will turn on these little pink 
guidelines. Um, currently, it's I think it just turned on this one because this will already be based upon our GPS. Where is the flight director? FD. FD. Above. Okay. Above so bank. I can click that button. Yep. Click that button. Yep. Okay, I clicked it. So now we're gonna hit altitude, the alt, and we're gonna go up mm -hmm. to a very nice altitude of 6,900. Oh yeah, that's right. See? <laughs> Good to remember. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be like, what was it? Is it six or five? Or, um, you think the... pilots get to choose fleet numbers like that? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, for their sanity. <laughs> They're just a glorified bus driver. That's true. They just they got one more dimension to worry about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then, okay, so we had altitude, we selected over here, you can see that happening, so this is going to be our, what the GPS is striving for, then we click vertical speed, so we're not, autopilot's not engaged, we're not doing anything, we're just setting up for when we do engage autopilot, how fast are we going to climb, and generally, and this is not optimal climb speed, and it's going to depend on your throttle, but generally 2,000, Feet per minute is a good climb rate, and we can start to settle that down after we get kind of. We'll take off, and then we'll, you know, get on pad, and then hit autopilot. It'll direct us, and then eventually we'll slow down and probably slow down the vertical speed a little bit. Can I click the vertical speed button? Yep, absolutely. That? Yep. So, basically, what we've done is hit altitude, selected the altitude to 6,900. Now. The plane knows 6900, but now it needs to know how fast we're going to get there, and we're going to leave vertical speed mode on, and then set it to 2000, so this slider, you yep. can see it, yep, will affect that. So now, awesome. we'll, uh, the final step on setting up the autopilot is hitting nav, so that just means when we turn on this button, we're going to be following, it's going to auto-adjust, so we may even, it, you know, if we're if we're off course, it'll basically redirect to a 45 degree angle to get back on the course. Um, but eventually we'll be flying this GPS course. We are going to have flight director on, which will come more into play on the landing side. Um, we've selected the altitude that we're going to, 6900, and then we hit vertical speed to tell it how fast we want to get there. Yeah, awesome. When do we click the nav button? The nav button can be, should be clicked now. So okay. lights on should be nav, FD, and VS. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what I got. Okay. Awesome, dude. Noise. All right. All right. So. All right. All right. All right. Now I guess for purposes of this video, so that you know people just want to know that maybe we could take off now and then set up the autopilot in the air because whatever we do down here is not necessary yet. Just in the yeah, interest I see of time. Yeah, we do that. Okay. Let's get off the ground. So first, before we do that, so by default, down here there are three different um, toolboxes, I guess, built in this GPS. Right now, I'll click on MFD, which I don't know what that stands for, <laughs> but it controls the map and your flight plan. It's a manual man flight. I don't yeah, know manual what it is. Flight directory something. Whatever. Yeah. So in here we have the flight plan, the approach we can change, speed bugs. Um uh, real quick, so once you're in MFD and only when you're in MFD can you control the pan on the map by scrolling on this lower button. So you can see we're going to Bay and then Omaji and then in there oh, is also yeah. Adele. Um before we take off, we should click on flight plan and wait for this to load. I don't know if this is a bug or just something that happens with the GPS, but it shows up as blank and then it needs to register what we've loaded. So we're taking off two duties and then going to bay and then from there, well... So this, because mine isn't filled in. Oh yeah, it's yeah, well, it in. Yeah, nice. that's why I don't yeah, know if that's in. the bug or not or what. It takes a little bit. So that's in there and that's good. It It's reflected here, so it should be in there, but just there's some bugs nice. with this GPS, and I think that helps loading that ahead of time. So, nice, yeah. Anyway, so now, as a reminder, we haven't done anything with actually flying IFR except for logging our flight plan, and that we're going to follow with this nav button and with our altitude that we've sh we've chosen of 6900. So <laughs> we we are not set for an ILS landing by any means yet, but we're going to take off, and then I'll 
show you that in the sky. Awesome. So you take off first, bro. All right. Park and break off. Park and brakes off. Going. And there you go. I saw you flying. Cranking up my engines, getting them hot, you know? Well, I got to turn off the parking brake. Control number delete. I, I did that. There's a problem. Different control button. It's the, I always hit the wrong control button. Whoop. <laughs> I have to hit my left control button. Well, there you go, dude. You're up in the air. Up in the air. So now I usually climb out around 10 degrees. So pretty fast is what you're saying. And then we're going to need to turn left. Turn left. And usually you want to follow the runway all the way out, which this flight pattern, that's what I was kind of showing about, uh, let me turn this VFR map off because it's down here. Um, put my flaps up. The flight, we didn't choose a, a departure whoop, flight path. And the turn that it takes you on is going to be too tight to really get there. It's just going to say, we're going from Madison to Bayes. So now, I mean, holy crap. Let me get back in the cockpit here and pay attention. All right, so <laughs> so now we're down, you know, by Cottage Grove Road and the interstate. Um, we're far south of the flight pen. So I'm going to right. click autopilot on now. And you'll see the flight director take over, and it's going to say the the pink uh, the pink lines are showing where the plane should be going, and then the yellow is what you are doing, obviously. So, dude, my plane's flying itself, bro. Yep. So now it's <laughs> it's not only redirecting redirecting us to the flight path, it's climbing at what we said to do at 2,000 so feet, which is yeah. based, you know. So if we slow down, so it depends on your speed, and you can easily stall here. So if you if you don't give it enough gas and you say 2,000, it's gonna keep shooting for 2,000 until it falls out of the sky. Like it, it doesn't know any better. It, it has no quit. It's it's a dog. Yeah, <laughs> it's a dog with its eye on the prize. And it's like I'm not letting go of shit. Um, What's funny is I don't even see you right now because I'm like so turned. Oh, there you are. I see you now. Yeah, let's see. I'm behind you. Oh, in a yeah. Decent wave. What up? Yeah, yeah. But we're now both getting on, like, the same flight pattern, so. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, you're right there. Yeah. All right, so I think now. So I guess we'll just let it climb to 6900 at this point because we're, we'll approach that in, uh, you know, under a Pretty minute bad. now. Yeah. Under a minute now. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks like right on the line too i don't think i've ever been right on the line <laughs> yeah <laughs> think it's about like computers I, like it's hell they're really precise that's yeah, crazy they, they, oh, i gotta retract my landing gear oh yeah, yes that, that's Check probably helpful flaps up too yeah, yeah my flaps were up when you turned up your flaps you gave me a good cue for that one nice I just yeah forgot about landing my bad. Gear. i forgot about well i didn't i realized i forgot to cue it because where i was we were talking about the control and the alt and the park and brake you, situation. You're literally supposed to do that right away, though, right? Pretty like, much. Like, once you have yeah. vertical speed and it's, like, comfortable that you're not going back down, then you know, yeah. put it on. So <laughs> now you're we'll... not going back down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you got to think for the worst, so I, I agree. <laughs> All right, so... All right, so what are we on to now? So now... So we're not even to 69 yet. Come on. we got to celebrate the 69. That's true. My plane's it's leveling off clone. a little bit. You yeah. should, um, so now you've probably reduced your, your torque a little bit already, your throttle. Um, yeah, but, I did, like, but now it's, like, getting really close to redlining. So oh, yeah, reduce it to, like, uh, so I'm going to be, you catch up, and I'll, I'm flying at 60 torque, so torque is the top gauge on the main center GPS. So if you, if you zoom in, you can see torque, which, um, we won't get into the specifics of that yeah. right now, but it's a good gauge of how fast you'll go. Um, yeah, what do you want to work at? 60 is what I'll do. Um, so somewhere around there. All right, I'm going to catch up for a little bit. I'm just going to stay at like 70. Yeah, that sounds good. A, a smidge. Okay, so um, just checking the ATC log. They haven't told us to do anything yet, um, which is good. And we shouldn't hear anything for a little bit. So now... Cool. 
<laughs> we need to go. Hey, 6900, bro. Yeah, 6900. 69. Yay. Okay, so we're at 69. All right, so 69. Now we need to go and set up our GPS um, to let it know what it needs to do and what it's looking for. So down here, mm -hmm. we had, you know, we select an MFD. It, would, it loads to PFD. Well, actually, first, let's let's check this because it's important too. So, PFD, we have speed bugs, and for any aircraft that has has this Garmin 3000, very helpful. So, V app is 85 knots in this airplane, which means that's the optimal landing speed, barring other circumstances like a crosswind or you know extra weight or whatever have you, short yeah. runway. So, 85 as we go into approach is going to be the the thing that we're going for. Well, and that's under speed bugs? Speed bugs. I don't know why they're called bugs. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> but I think that, that probably has to deal with some other... Well, it does have to deal with some other calculations, but we're not getting into those today. Minimums we'll come back to because that's not the most important thing right now. Um, yeah. So NAVCOM. Um, down below MFD on the right options button. So uh -huh. these are... This is what our co-pilot that we have is using to communicate with the tower and they're controlling what you know what we're talking to whether it's madison tower or milwaukee tower or somewhere in between now down here in the bottom left is audio and radio um, this... my co-pilot's gonna be turned off because of last time how oh you should turn that from. back on yeah <laughs> i can hit escape real turn quick back on real quick yeah let me hit her i'll hit escape real quick too Assistance piloting. I bet yours is turned off too. No, because I flew with Austin briefly this weekend, and he was like, "No, turn that back on. Don't." <laughs> um, user. It's under user experience, I think. Uh, While you do that, I'm gonna need some little more wine here. In advance um, of taking land landing. off. Uh, take off, brother. Assisted yoke. Aircraft systems. I'm trying to find this bad boy. I cannot find this bad boy at all. Um, where is this? Piloting controls, aircraft system. Why Why am I so dumb? Help. Help. Somebody help. Why did he have to leave me? He left me and I'm... Uh, um, delegate ATC to AI. Turn that back on. Okay. F11. Apply and save. Um, escape. Escape. Well, we'll escape because he is currently gone. Did, um, you, did you find it? Yeah. Yeah, I found okay. it, dude. Okay. So Sorry, we'll I didn't get a little it's refill fine. there. Anyway, All right. It's fine. All right. So again... Right, I'm back here. So revisit. So now we've gone to NAVCOM. We're in this screen. This is what the co-pilot's controlling for us, mm -hmm. which is very nice of them. Now we got to go to audio and radios down at the bottom. Audio and radios down at the bottom left. Under MFD? Nope. Uh, NAVCOM. So PFD, MFD, NAVCOM. It's the last button. NAVCOM. Got it. Yep. So then on the bottom left, there is audio and radio. Mm-hmm. Now... There's a lot of things here. We don't need to worry about them. We need to worry There's about Nav 1 for sure. So Nav 1 is going to be what our localizer. So the localizer will will connect with our airport or our airplane as we're coming in. And it will say, you need to go a little bit left. We're following this line. And then once we connect to that lightning bolt, then it's going to tell us the glide path slash glide, sc glide scope to go down for the textbook landing of you know it's usually 500 feet loss per minute um so where do we get this information it does not come preloaded so but austin was on that little sheet it does come on that little sheet yes. it does <laughs> it does indeed so there are a couple places you can find it so we if as a reminder you know we clicked here to go to there to 19r you can also do it here. You're looking for this runway. You want ILS 19R. Now in here, the localizer is what our plane is connecting to and talking to. So it's at the radio frequency of 1103. So 1103. 110 <laughs> so you put that into that nav one screen and then you have mm -hmm. to make sure you hit transfer. Don't hit that enter, means. it doesn't matter. Hit transfer. Like, well, it does matter. So enter will bring it into the backup slot so you can transfer it later. But right now, we don't need a backup slot. We just need to know where we're landing. Wait, under under nav one, we're putting that in? Yep, nav one. So let me just go back. So nav one. 
now it's set. So when the white is the current activated frequency, we've hit one one ten five is the whoop is the backup, and so that's what's showing uh -huh. up. But and then below that is one 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 zero point three. Hold on, let me let me just make so nav one when I loaded it was something mm -hmm. else. It was like one one zero five or whatever. Yep, what, that's what it was. Yep. Uh -huh. So then I typed in one one zero three, which is based upon the one one zero three of the localizer, which also can be find out, found up here. Then so I'll do that oh, again, yeah, yeah. and then they'll, they'll both be set to that, but that's not of any consequence. So now we'll see that 1, 1, 10, 3, 1, uh -huh. 1, 10, 3. So that's now, one, yeah. okay, so now the other distinction, which we, uh, with this flight pattern, we're not going to get into, but 1, 1, or sorry, the nav 2 is generally um, either for finding the airport and or via the backup, finding the go around so like I missed this landing and then where do I need to go from here so just for sake of argument we're gonna put in badger which is up here and the this looks like a hold pattern up here um, so we'll put in this one one six four and that's not a localizer that's just a VOR station that'll show us where that badger station is so if we go down to nav 2 we want the one 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 six four hit transfer. Now if we go back up, because I'll make this go down, we have the localizer, and now we have Badger. Yeah, so I okay. have both of them. So it's just 110.3 and 116.4 yep, for both and white. one and yep. 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 So yep. Both, so now, yeah, yeah, both and white. Uh -huh. Okay, now click home on that screen if you want. We can do that later, it doesn't matter. Just to get back to MFD, because that's... Once you've set that, and as long as ATC sends us in on that, Plane we'll and we'll be fine. They might not because we're gonna have a crosswind based upon 270 wind direction. Now, yeah. the most important part, we think that when <laughs> I this took me the longest to figure out. I was like, what? Because I was like watching videos of other planes and this varies mm -hmm. by plane, and it absolutely you need to tell it now the plane what that means. So. We're not going to tell it yet, but we're going to get it set up. So right now, we have Active Nav is Flight Management System. I believe that's the acronym, FMS. So that's just the flight plan we've loaded. We need to go into PFD Settings, which is back again, just on this one of these options here, PFD Settings. Uh huh. Bearing 1, we want to set to Nav 1, which is our localizer. It's already picking it up. Bearing 1. So in the middle of the screen, so if you go back to the... Whoop. Yeah, I'm under PFD settings. PFD settings, and then bearing one, click the button and change it to nav one. So in the and blue font below it, it should say yeah, nav one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay. the nav and one. And then also in the, the, real quick, is it a sanity check that IBLY shows up right here. So that is confirmation that we're on the right localizer. Um, oh, it's talking. Uh, going to one tree. Okay. Right, I should be much closer to you now, so I'm gonna drop down to that 60. Okay. Yeah, actually, let's drop down and let's slow it down a little bit to like 45-ish. Okay, we're good. Um, no, so that, and now in the bearing one, so that's one option. You can see this line here is telling us which direction that localizer is in. Bearing two, which is a little bit different right now because it's not going to the, a lot of airports will have this at the airport itself, and so it'll tell you this is how you get to the airport, and then this is, bearing two will be how to get to the airport if you get lost. Bearing one is what you're trying to get to. Bearing two, go to nav two. So now we have nav one, nav two. Okay. Oh, so so Bay is Badger. No, sh all right. Uh, so it, we're now we're getting we're so we're 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 coming up on two knock miles away from. Yeah. So now we. Okay. So hold on. Let's hit. Let's hit escape. Real quick. Okay. Because we've uh, trying to cover 
probably too much in a 20 some minute flight but um or i'm i'm just prone to over communicating uh so now <laughs> so in that last screen we saw that when i hit when we put nap to to bay which is badger which is part of our flight plan we're yeah. coming up on two miles oh two nautical miles away from that and in the ATC messages, they were telling us to descend. So now, now we're we're pretty much queued up. But before we go on with this screen, we're gonna have to go and listen to ATC and start our descent, which will mean slowing our engine down, doing the altitude set, and then vertical speed. And then once that gets going, we can go back to the final touches of this and explaining kind of what's going on there. All right. Well, I'm you ready? ready? All right. I'm born. Huh. All right. So now it's told me to go down to 2,900 feet, which is what we expected based on the flight plan. Even though we're off this white course, we're really going to bay, which is what the plane was doing. So, so we've confirmed we're going to go down. Oh no! Is my is my thing frozen? So I hit retry. Oh with man. Zero. Yeah, we're not doing this. What's frozen? Just give it a second, mine froze once too. So don't even worry, don't panic. Everybody sit down. We're gonna be okay. We are gonna get through this. Okay, so I am descending, that's good. Oh, what do you want me to do? How do I descend? Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to Pretty redo cool. this video anyway, so... Uh, well, you just keep doing your thing. You just keep doing yeah. your thing. Yeah, so no, so hit, hit it. Um, scroll down some amount on the altitude, altitude select first so on altitude select oh. scroll it so you decrease the altitude and then hit vs and then decrease that some and the one thing so while this main screen crashes so we're stuck at 6900 and speed and whatever the little screen above that with the speed and the altitude is not broken and that still works so i can see that i'm decreasing altitude I'm at a reasonable speed. I don't know how far down I'm going. Why, why are you still increasing my speed? Because you're going down, so you need to pull back on the throttle. No, there we go. I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so what, what is next? Okay, so... We're gonna need, um, eventually our... GPS to recover probably because we need to be precise coming into these things of knowing because right now what we can't see is we're we're declining in altitude right um, but we can't see what we've set our altitude to and you know like overall if we if we're close which we can always hit if we get to want to actually yeah that's probably maybe the better approach is just go low with the altitude and then once we get to 2700 or 2900 2900 just hit yeah, 29. set altitude and then just roughly abruptly set our altitude at that because what we're trying to do and the last thing that I was going to show on this screen maybe that still works I don't know nope last screen was just wind direction, which we already kind of know because we have live, or we don't have live weather, so it's four knots out of the west. Um, but, so for now, if we can still scroll out on here, nice. <laughs> so for now, we're, you know, this flight plan is following VORs around, and then we're rounding it to try to make it a nice round turn for our passengers in. Um, but again, what really matters is when we get on onto the path of the landing. So mm -hmm. once we we're gonna get to Adele first, and we should be around twenty nine hundred, which is what we're going for right now. Yep. Then they might tell us probably to go down to twenty eight hundred, which will initiate. But back here. We're gonna, we're gonna switch. Oh, we, yeah, we absolutely do need this screen to unfreeze. Um, Come on, screen. Because we we're need to switch. What, 
what input the, f the plane is taking. So I'm just going to slow down even a little bit more, give a little bit more uh, chance to uh, take up. So you can see the screen where you can see your actual speed rate. Um, uh, the one... The little the, square the... box right towards the top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So watch that and like make sure it doesn't go below like 135 probably. You'll start pitching up a little bit. And then also be watching to 2700. Um, so once we get to 2700, we'll want to hit altitude here. The alt button to hold altitude. Uh huh. But what we, what we need from this screen is to be able to go back and hit what input it's going to rely on to direct us where we think we need to go. And I'm just going to see if we can. Oh, we can actually do that here, maybe. Whoop. See, this is a lesson of. Oh, we can do it here. Hell yeah, we can do it here. We're good. We're good. Oh, also oh, one right. more, one more little quick tip, Hokey. Um, uh -huh. Fuel imbalance. I already so, switched mine. So if you take it, <laughs> if you take off from the gate, um, you'll set this as part of the startup procedures, but it doesn't start it when you start from the runway. Up, so up on the top, the above the the window, to the right of the generator, to the right of starter ignition, uh -huh. in the fuel section, there is a button, fuel select, fuel cell. Uh huh. Change it to auto, and it does it by itself. No way. Yep. No way. Yep. You've got to be kidding me. Yep. I don't know why that doesn't show up if you start from the runway, but it's probably punishment for taking a shortcut. Probably is. So I'm at 2,900 feet. Okay, perfect. Um, hit alt. I'm coming up right there. Yeah, I'm already holding 2,900. Okay, I'm at 3,000 now. Yeah, you're at 28.5, 28.3. There it is. How fast are you flying? Uh, 130 on 35, 38 on the descent, so I'll speed it up a little bit here. Just so, we don't, so we don't stall. We should fly like... Well, I'm still 160. Okay, where are you at? Oh yeah, I'm you're like, back there. All right. I'm decently behind you still. Okay, so she's turning, baby. She's turning. Yeah, which is good because everything is definitely like my horizontal, my horizon planes off. The altitude's broken. The speed's broken. We're not. <laughs> this screen is currently freaking useless. We want to rely on that small little screen and see what ATC is telling us to do. And now the cool breakthrough that I've just realized is, so back to that, the, the screen with PFD, MFD, NAVCOM in yeah. the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you click PFD where we found speed, bump, speed bugs and real quick while we have a little bit of time, let me just make sure my speed's okay, yeah. Um, what speed are you looking at? I'm so confused. Okay, so above the the pilot screen, the big one with all yeah, the, yeah. there's the two little screens above it. Yeah, so I got 159 in that screen. Yep, perfect. And then it also show you attitude, altitude. Sorry. Yeah, and it's the same though as the big screen down below. Oh, then you're not frozen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mine shows 148, 2900, and the other screen shows 189 and 6900. Yeah, that's a problem. Yep. <laughs> so you're good. Um, I'm catching up to you. I gotta slow down. So I guess, like, for right now, it doesn't do any good for me to show you where you would go, but it's the yeah. the same thing and another alternative because I've this is a bug apparently that's affecting other people. Um, but for what we need to do is we need to line up with the runway, which we've they've already told us we're expecting that runway. Well, that's good. We need to eventually hit approach but before we hit approach and as we line up here we need to tell the navigation system that we're no longer doing the flight plan the FMS flight management system that we're going to rely on that localizer that we set which that part of my screen apparently isn't frozen wait Weird. is it back nope it's not back god damn it all right, um, so yeah, now I'm, that's not broken either. Okay, so 
If you remember on the flight plan, it showed 191 is the approach. Right. So it's correcting a little bit right now for me, but we we should be able to find the localizer. So for me, I'm going to go down to this screen above the throttle, hit mm -hmm. PFD, and then nav source to nav 1. And what you'll see, and there's another way to do this if this were to ever unfreeze, now we have a green line, and now that green line is nav 1. So that is talking to the localizer up at our runway and saying, okay, we need to be lined up with this. Not just we need to be lined up to 191, but we need to be in line with that localizer. Uh huh. So now we're gonna want to slow down to yeah. flap speed, which is that that when that white line begins. Okay. Slow down a bit. God, that's so hard to look at the nav screen. I'm just frozen. You'll see what I mean when I send you this video. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I'm so excited about so it. So terrible. It's what I posted in the Discord chat the other day, too. Oh, okay. I was wondering what you were posting about. So once you get to All that right. flap speed, hit the first flap level of flaps down. Yeah, totally. And now that'll oh, help us with our lift so we don't stall. Um, keep it at like 115-ish. Now okay. hit the APR button on the, na on the autopilot next to the left of nav. Oh, and my okay, screen's so not. Hit. Yeah, my screen's not working, so it's not going to show up. But it's... approach mode. Okay. So now, in the in your main pilot screen, you'll see a GS in green or no in white. Uh, uh, above, like at the very top of the screen, and so right now it's looking for the localizer glide scope, and it probably hasn't found it yet. Localizer glide scope. Do you okay. see the GS? I see a GP, uh, GS, 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 GS. Oh, okay, it'd be the, the very top middle of the screen. Um, mine, mine says APYD. Yep, and then just to the right of that, does it say GS? Mine says ALT, the ALT. Does it say GS below it all that? No. Okay. Oh, it's back. Mine's back. It okay. just worked. Good, good, good. Does yours say GS? Yes, now my GS is in green. Where are you at? You might be... I'm right behind you. I'm not too far, but I'm not I'm not on to the white part of it yet, so I haven't met Omogi yet. There, GS, just hit it. Okay. So I didn't hit the, the correct flight of the fl flight plan yet. So. It might have frozen on you too, it's hard to tell. But oh, maybe. It so yeah. there's a very important part that we missed because my screen was frozen that essentially... When you hit approach, there's a little green dot that's looking oh, for the localizer, and then okay. and then when it starts coming down, that first when it hits that first green dot, you put your landing gear down, and the second dot, you put your full flaps down, and then now, what we're trying to do, and you should pull back in the throttle. Now we're trying to maintain 85 knots as we come in. So okay, do I put down my second? Um... Yep, full flaps. Oh, mine didn't go all the way down. There we go. Oh, mine's yelling at me for landing gear. Should I put it down? Yes, landing gear too. So and as you come in, what you do once it finds a glide scope, that little green dot will appear, and as it hits that first dot, um, so you see there's like a the from the top there's it comes down from the top. So that first dot as it comes down, that's landing gear. Whoop! I'm going uh -huh. way too slow. Whoop! Stall. Almost avoided the stall. Nice. Okay, I see dots, so we're just so, yeah. trying to follow dots. So right no, now. Okay. so now that that's more as you come in that tells you when you put your landing gear down, and then when you put your full flaps down. So right now we have landing gear down, full flaps, full flaps, and now we are trying. We have a wait. I can actually do this now, but I'm going exactly 80 miles per hour. We want to do 85. Okay, so I will increase my speed just a smidge then. Okay. Now I'm almost going 85, so that's perfect. Just keep it around there. Yep. So the plane. Yep. So the plane's doing right now is just flying. What the localizer is telling it needs to be on a glide slope. So vertical right. speed 500, negative 500 Which to the airport. And you can see that 
the plane is pointing to the right because we are in a crosswind. So we are going... Uh -huh. Interesting. So we are flying a little bit into the wind because to stay on what the computer is calculated as the appropriate path in. Yeah. So when we have landing with a crosswind, you're going to want to keep your speed up a little bit above 85, somewhere like 90-ish, just because it can have adverse effects on your lift. Gotcha. So I will just turn up my speed just a smidge to help yeah, out my bump plane. it up a little bit. Okay, and I'm like going 90 now. And what we didn't put in because of uh, technical difficulties and me talking too much was the minimum, but the minimum is essentially 200 feet above the ground, which I know is like 870 something. So yeah. once it gets to like around 900 feet per the altimeter, which is based on barometric pressure, which we know is 2992 still, turn off the autopilot and then it is on you to land the plane from there. So when are we turning off the autopilot? What, what At number? like 900. At 900, okay. So like, let it, you could turn it off now if you wanted. Oh but no, it's, I, I, it's doing the work I, for you, so it's nice. Yeah, I actually understand now what these blue dots mean because the the, the, the auto landing thing, it shuts off at 200 before the runway, 200 feet before the runway. So I think that's when you're supposed to turn off your autopilot. <laughs> that Which could be, fun. yeah. Yeah, that's actually really cool. So I just hit the autopilot button though, right? Yep, that's and turn it off, saying. yep. Disengage autopilot, which is a terrifying thought because I haven't flown anything yet this whole time. I don't want to, dude. You took off. I okay. I I turned it off. I turned it off. You this got this. Uh oh. I'm just kidding. I haven't done anything yet that requires an uh oh. Dude, that makes it so much better. Like like it helps. Like even if you just set it up for the approach oh, pattern. Shit. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, crosswind. Yep. Yeah, it's a it's not a big crosswind, but I don't know how to land in crosswind, so any crosswind is not a good crosswind. Oh, dude, that made my landing so gentle, so freaking gentle. Yeah, and it helps. Like what I found too is just like when you're even if you're coming in for VFR, like what angle you should be looking for. You know, like when I first started playing this game, I was like trying to remember back in the day which i didn't know how to really land anyway so like just trying to relearn of like you know how do i tell if i'm too high or too low and like i right i would always second guess and it's more about just like picturing it and be able to see like what it looks like when the plane's coming in and then you can just be like okay mm -hmm. so it looks that looks about what i have when i go in for i love I am right behind you, bro. Uh -huh. Nice. We both landed this and we both flew. High five. High five. Very nice. Very nice. But I actually kind of like that your system stopped breaking because then you got to kind of explain some of the some of the extra systems that maybe will be helpful. You know what I mean? Some of the some of the other things you can look at when your computer breaks, because I'm yeah. sure that happens frequently. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, like, and Oh no, it, I'm gonna go to Gates. Um, the other day, that screen that I was using to to do it when my main screen is broken for my pilot screen, that screen froze. Like, everything was frozen. And I was just like, I can't. And, like, the flight plan thought I was going back to where I came. And I was like, <laughs> oh boy. This is, uh. This is problematic. Oops. I'm on the wrong side of the, the buoys. Oh yeah, Mr. Following ground rules and only going 20. Oh, I'm going slow. I was trying to figure out how, because I accidentally said parking, and I don't want to go to parking. I want to go to the gates. Mine, mine's going to taxi way. Oh no, aviation parking? Ruff yeah. Up. Where'd you go? Is that where you're going? Yeah. Alright, let's go. Okay. I mean, why not, right? Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of the end. But I... I think that's, you know, looking that up would have been really terrible, but having someone explain it to me is really helpful. So I think, honestly, if, if you were to watch through this video a couple times, 
I think you'd really get it down on what to, on yeah. what to do. And I you think know, they're, like, like, I flew uh, Arizona last night, um, and I didn't have any glitch issues whatsoever. Um, and I always run into glitch issues going Madison, Milwaukee, so it could be even be, like, flight path dependent, so maybe next time it's a little bit longer flight, too, so we can do it more, like... In-depth. Yeah, uh, like... A deeper what dive. You're doing. And it's a longer yeah. approach, um, so... Yeah, but overall, what you gave us definitely, you know, is a IFR flight. Like, I mean, we didn't use anything but our instruments to fly that. Yep. And it was really simple, I think. I, I mean, the button order kind of, you know, would be the thing that would kind of stress me out. But I like actually how we set it up on the ground. That makes it a lot simpler because then yeah. it's just this simple setup on the ground. And then you're only worrying about your next steps, which is looking at that uh, that map and kind of setting up the simple thing. And oh. really, really would like I when I fly, I'm setting up the GPS on the ground, too, because it. Once you get the hang of it, it's it's really quick. You look at the map, say, okay, I need the localizer, and then you put in the other nav too. Get your you get your nav settings, your bearing settings set up. To nav one and nav two. You put on what I didn't show was the wind, so you can see that as you're coming in, and then you know do your autopilot, set your minimum, and like you're good to go. And then you're just taking off and hitting nav and watching what ATC is telling you. And it's super right. easy, unless they, you know, eventually will do some live weather flying and select the wrong one runway, and then they'll definitely, <laughs> they'll almost certainly tell you, like, um, as we're coming in, it won't say, you know, your flight plan is changed. It's going to say expect a different runway, and then... Oh, jeez. Then you have to go into your, uh, well couple ways to do it but you can do your easiest way is going to your approach and then select the runway and then make sure that your transition is correct because your oh there's transitions in the airway and stuff because it depends which way you're coming in to that ILS um, right. flight pattern so yeah. oh man so there's a lot more we have to cover is what you're saying I'm not a genius yet I have a lot more of other YouTube videos to compile information and uh, books to read and shit for uh <laughs> we get <laughs> we get really into the specifics, but there are some really good videos I found about like how to read those. Um, I still can't think of the word. Uh, That's okay. Yeah, the maps. Anyways, yeah. The maps. Yeah, the map. <laughs> you know what the map? The maps. All right, you got anything more to share? No. All Just, right. Uh, well, if we got nothing else to share we appreciate you guys watching as we're pulling in here in our beautiful uh general parking as jason's flying above me and i'm running into him <laughs> he's just caught in looking at the scenery man and then i forgot that i need to move this plane for it anyways drop that like at the bottom it helps us out on the business side of things as our two favorite podcasters say we don't know why but it does <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Take care, yeah. guys. <laughs> Bye. All right. Perfect.